Hello, thank you for joining us for home worship. This sermon is for January 23rd in 2022, and it's entitled, What is a Miracle? We look first to the gospel according to Mark, to chapter 1, verses 21 through 28, and it says this, Jesus and his followers went into Capernaum. Immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and started teaching. The people were amazed by his teaching, for he was teaching them with authority, not like the legal experts. Suddenly, there in the synagogue, a person with an evil spirit screamed, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are the Holy One from God. Silence, Jesus said, speaking harshly to the demon. Come out of him. The unclean spirit shook him and screamed, and then it came out. Everyone was shaken and questioned among themselves, what's this, a new teaching with authority? He even commands unclean spirits, and they obey him. Right away, the news about him spread throughout the entire region of Galilee. Jesus' ministry as a miracle worker, well, they called him rabbi, so maybe he's a miracle rabbi. What is a miracle, though? What does it mean? The word miracle, according to Merriam-Webster, is this, an unusual or wonderful event that is believed to be caused by the power of God. A very amazing or unusual event, thing, or achievement, an extraordinary event, manifesting divine intervention in human affairs, an extremely outstanding or unusual event, thing, or accomplishment. Notice what the dictionary does not say. It doesn't say a phenomenon that is beyond the laws of nature. But that's mostly what we think a miracle is, right? One of the spiritual gifts that you see in the spiritual gifts inventory on the United Methodist Church's website is the gift of miracles. It is the gift of an ability to operate at a spiritual level that recognizes the miraculous work of God in the world. Miracle workers invoke God's power to accomplish that which appears impossible or impractical by worldly standards. Miracle workers remind us of the extraordinary nature of the ordinary world, thereby increasing faithfulness and trust in God. Miracle workers pray for God to work in the lives of others, and they feel no sense of surprise when their prayers are answered. The gift of miracles. Notice again, it has nothing to do with anything that is outside the natural order. And the play by William Gibson in the subsequent film as well, The Miracle Worker, <laughs> which depicts Anne Sullivan, the teacher of Helen Keller, a girl who lost her sight and hearing at a young age. Keller went on to live a very full life for someone with such limitations. No sight, no hearing, she used her other three senses and graduated from college, authored 14 books and several more articles, and was an activist for women's rights and for the rights of the differently abled. Keller lived a full life. It could be said that she did more with three senses than most folks do with all five. So in this story, who is the miracle worker? The teacher who broke through her lack of sight and lack of hearing to help her communicate, or Keller herself, who accomplished so much with so little. When we think of miracles in the church, we often think of miracle healings, road show evangelism, where people walk forward to be healed by the miracle worker. In the film, Leap of Faith, Steve Martin plays Jonas Nightingale, a.k.a. Jack Newton, a traveling charlatan who preys upon the faithful people, coming to his worship services. The miracles are all staged and everything is fake until one day a real person is really healed and Jack can't explain it. And it challenges his faith in the fakery he's a part of. Faith challenging fakeness. 
The genuine article is not something he signed up for. But let's consider for a moment Jesus' miraculous healing of this man who appeared to all that were there to be possessed by a demon. It's clear to scientific minds that this demon possession could have easily been just the result of mental illness, schizophrenia, or just something temporary even. However, have you ever seen someone go from a terribly mentally ill state to complete rightness? Eh, it could happen, but it is nonetheless miraculous. And part of the miracle is that the people surrounding Jesus at the time said to him, well, look at this. He heals with authority. And it softened them towards Jesus and toward his ministry. And it accomplished what it was intended to accomplish. That they would recognize Jesus in their own lives. Now again and again, he says, tell no one of what you've seen here. But in this instance, the gospel writer says that everyone was amazed by what Jesus did. And they understood that he was the one that could heal them. And the miracles came in a very different way an everyday way, if you will. The real miracle may be the coming to terms with how you live your life and changing. The real miracle is something that happens all the time in prisons and hotel conference centers and churches, both in the sanctuaries and down in the basement with the 12-step groups that meet weekly. In our day and age, it happens online and over the phone, not in person. People are having miraculous healings of the heart and the mind and turning their lives around. The fighters start looking for peace. The thieves start giving what they have generously. The greedy and powerful embrace what they cannot buy, family and friendship and love. The lion lays down with the lamb and a little child shall lead them. And just because someone can explain it or tell you how it happens, doesn't make it any less miraculous. I hope that you will see a miracle happen in your life today. Amen.